Right now, scientists in laboratories around the world are developing brain chips. Now, these are chips that can be inserted into the brain, and they are wireless. And let me show you. They have actually had a monkey that broke its back. So its spinal cord was severed. The monkey was paralyzed from the waist down. But they inserted a chip in the monkey's brain, and then they inserted another chip in its lower spine. And they allowed the brain to communicate with the lower spine. As soon as they did this, the monkey could walk again. That is amazing. Totally amazing. So they could actually transmit the thoughts of the monkey wirelessly to parts of the body. But it gets even more amazing than that. So they now have, in a laboratory, monkeys with chips in their brain. And then they have an electric wheelchair. And just by thinking, just with the thought of the monkey, they can drive the wheelchair around. Think about that. If a monkey can do that, what could you do if you had that chip in your brain? They have also done experiments with monkeys with a chip in their brain and a robotic arm. And the monkey, just by thinking, can reach out and grab something like food and feed itself. That is amazing if you think about it. So the monkey, monkey's thoughts are actually able to control things outside their body. So when we start to think about the future, about where technology is headed, this is where we're going. We will have brain chips in humans. And the brain, people who will get those brain chips first are people who suffer from severe medical conditions. So if you have a severe medical condition, like you're paralyzed from the neck down, or you suffer a brain disorder like Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, and that brain chip can restore your quality of life, would you hesitate to get the chip? No, of course not. You would say, put the chip in my brain. So that is starting right now, these experiments. And even more interesting, scientists have done experiments with rats and they have chips in the rat's brain. And what they did was they taught a rat how to do certain things. And when the rat did all these complex things, it could get food. Now, it took the rat weeks to learn that. Weeks. But then they hooked the rat's brain uh, chip to the internet. And they had another rat in another city and instantly, they connected those two rats' brains. And do you know what happened? The other rat knew how to get the food right away. It didn't have to learn anything. The knowledge was transferred from one brain of a living animal to another brain. That is amazing. That opens up a world of possibilities. Because if they can do that in rats today, imagine 10 years from now what they can do in humans. And we will go there. So, mind-to-mind -mind communication. This is something of science fiction that we all read about. But this is actually possible today, as I just showed you. So there will come a point where if we have a chip in our brain, and, and you out there have a chip in your brain, we can communicate. We can communicate without talking. We can communicate when you're halfway around the world and we can exchange knowledge. So, if you look at a world where we have these chips that are connected to the internet, all of a sudden, every piece of information on the internet becomes accessible to our minds. Now, when we look back at today, and we have to go to Baidu or Google and type it in, that will seem so primitive. Nobody will do that. You will just think, what knowledge do I need? and it will appear there for you to use. But it gets even weirder, stranger, because we will not only be able to transfer knowledge, but we will be able to transfer memories. 
Now, so you could have an experience like skydiving, and all of a sudden you could transfer that experience to a friend, and all of a sudden they have experienced what you have experienced. It gets even weirder because we will be living our lives as our lives. We know our lives and our memories, but you will all of a sudden have access to anybody's life who wants to make it available to you. People will put open source their lives so others can download pieces of their lives and experience those things. That will be really strange. We won't know the difference between our own memory and a memory we acquired from someone else. Think about that. It gets even stranger. <laughs> so, you, all of us, are here learning at Seeds, right? Getting EMBAs and MBAs. Well, this will be obsolete because Seeds will literally be in the cloud, and you will just download from all the best minds in the world whatever you need to know when you need to know it. Our brains will be. We will no longer have universities as we have them today. These that will change. Information will be on demand. Information will be commoditized. Knowledge will be commoditized. All of us will be smarter, uh, have infinite amounts of storage, and infinite access to information. It will be unheard of. We will no longer be this isolated human being. We will be connected to everything. So, you can imagine not only will we be able to get knowledge, but we can actually have full experiences in our head. So right now we have these clunky VR units that we have to put on. But in the future, you can just download a whole environment and actually live in it. And all of you might think this is not real, but do you know every night when you dream, those dreams are real. No matter how fantastic your dreams are, they are real. You feel like you're really there. Our brains have that capability already built in. All it takes is the technology to stimulate and, and, and transfer the right images in our brain, so our brain creates them, and then we will live like the difference between us dreaming and reality will be blurred. We will be spending a lot of time outside our bodies. So, think about this: you, as a human being, right now are trapped in this body. But once you are connected to the internet, you are no longer trapped in your body. You can actually be anywhere at any time that any other person or any other device is is getting sensory information. So there could be a robot on Mars, and you could literally tap into the robot on Mars, and it would be like you're on Mars. It could totally recreate the experience, including the sensations, the physical sensations, like everything. Of you being on Mars, you can live through other people, your favorite pop star, your favorite <laughs> scientist. You could be in Elon Musk's head right now, walking around doing what he's doing. If Elon Musk allowed you to do that, it gets so strange because our senses now we have our five senses of our body, but suddenly, if we are connected to a world of intelligent machines. And intelligent sensors all over. We will no longer have five senses. We will have access to hundreds of sensory input, infrared, right? All these UV, all these different types of senses that we never even experienced before. It will radically change how we perceive existence. So if you start to go down this path, you see we won't even be our life today. Will be totally alien to us. We will be living in a whole nother reality that is blending information, sensory information, data information, memories, all of this from all around the world in this vast internet. And that will and can happen. So let's go even further.、Uh, experiencing other lives. So. All of us experience things in our life, but now we will be able to have many lives. You you can have many lives 
because you can access other people in other places and live through them. And if you want to think about this, it can be almost like heaven. Why do I say this? Because if you study every major religion in the world, every religion, Buddhism, Christianity, you know, Hinduism, what those religions promise us is that we will escape our bodies in the future. We will go to some heaven or nirvana or a state of non-being or a state of inclusiveness with everybody. No longer will we and our consciousness be confined to our bodies as an individual. In fact, if you look at us right now as a human being, if I feel pain, if I'm in pain, nobody else can feel the pain I feel. If you're in pain, I can't feel your pain. I can feel sorry for you, I can empathize with you, but I cannot feel your pain. But in this world, we will actually be able to feel the emotions of other people. You can actually not just transfer data and sensory information, but emotions. I can actually, I would know your pain, you would know our pain, and human beings would never be alone. So, we will come to a point where we, as gods, like gods, will be creating our own reality. We will be redefining what the human experience is for the first time in history. This can happen, and it will happen, but what we want to think about is this. Technology is really powerful. The internet, being connected, is really powerful, but we've already seen in a very primitive way, just with our cell phones, these primitive devices, how it can totally change our life. Like all of our lives are changed by WeChat. All of our lives are changed by the internet. Well, we are embarking on a path now where we will become the internet. The internet will be become us. They will be inseparable. We'll have our storage and everything else all over the place. And when we do that, we have to understand that this is a big responsibility. It's something we as a society, we as the human race, must think about very, very carefully. Because imagine, people can hack your cell phone now. People can hack your computer. And it can be bad. They can steal your banking information, take all your money. They can steal your identity. But they can't really hurt you. In the future, though, if somebody hacks into your head because it's connected to the internet, they can steal you. They could actually steal you. They can implant memories in your head that you don't have. They could erase memories. They could control you in, wa in ways that you wouldn't even know you're being controlled. Is this scary? So I painted on the hand a heaven, but there is also a hell, right? This is heaven and hell. We are on the cusp of this technology that is so powerful and has the potential to so radically transform our lives and our existence, and we have to be very careful about how we do this. We don't want people controlling us. So think about this. Think very carefully. Everybody in this room are very smart people. You're all highly educated. We are going to be making these decisions that lay the groundwork for this technology in our lifetime. And those decisions will affect the rest of humanity more than any decisions we have made in the past. 